Despite the declaration of a humanitarian ceasefire on October 9th, after a meeting between the Armenian Azerbaijani and Russian foreign ministers, multiple instances have taken place of Azerbaijani forces violating the ceasefire agreement. Azerbaijan too is claiming that Armenia is violating the ceasefire. Armenian defense officials reported that Azerbaijani forces were carrying out assaults in the direction of the northeastern area of the front, as well as on the towns of Hadrut and Karakhambeli. Shelling also took place on Hadrut, Shushi, Martuni and Stepanakert, whilst the Azerbaijani side reported that the city of Ganja is being shelled. The Office of Artsakh's Human Rights Defender released a statement saying that five civilians had died since the 12pm ceasefire on October 9th. In addition, according to the Armenian side, Azerbaijani special forces attempted to make a subversive operation in the town of Hadrut, where a fierce battle took place. In the attack, a woman and her disabled son were killed by Azerbaijani soldiers. Two other civilians also died in the Hadrut attack. Another civilian died in Martuni after his house collapsed, and another civilian was injured in the village of Shosh. Due to the ceasefire violations, the International Committee of the Red Cross has stated that it cannot undergo the work it was assigned in the Moscow Agreement, which included mediating the exchange of bodies and prisoners. According to Armenia's defense ministry, though Azerbaijani special forces entered the town of Hadrut, they were eventually pushed out of the strategically important town. Artsakh's defense army also reported that Armenian forces had downed an Azerbaijani Su-25 fighter jet. Over the weekend, footage also circulated on the internet. The first were videos showing Syrian jihadist militants of the Hamza and Sultan Murad Brigade fighting in Nagorno-Karabakh in Azerbaijani uniforms whilst clearly speaking Arabic. The Armenian government is stating that this is the clearest evidence so far of the use of terrorist and mercenary groups by Azerbaijan. Another video showed fighters claiming to be part of the ultra-nationalistic Grey Wolves Turkish militant group, who were again filming themselves in Nagorno-Karabakh. Due to the presence of these groups, President of Nagorno-Karabakh, Araik Harutunyan, called for an international anti-terrorism coalition to be formed between Armenia, Artsakh, Russia and Iran. Armenian Foreign Minister Zohrab Manatsakanyan travelled to Moscow on October 12th to hold talks with the co-chairs of the OSCE Minsk Group, as well as with the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Azerbaijan's Foreign Minister will also meet with the Russian Foreign Minister on October 13th. In a press conference after the meeting, Lavrov lamented that the ceasefire was not being implemented, but added that after meetings tomorrow with the Azerbaijani side, he hopes an observed ceasefire will begin. Lavrov confirmed that Turkey supports the Moscow ceasefire agreement, but will not be party to the talks. Manatsa Kanyan thanked Lavrov and also drew attention to the use and transportation of mercenaries by Turkey. In terms of initiatives organized by Armenians, the All-Armenian Fund's Artsakh Relief Fund has passed the $100 million mark. The funds are significant, but far more is needed to repair the damage inflicted by Baku and Ankara. A charter flight was also organized from LA to Yerevan, carrying 20 tons of humanitarian aid. A further flight will also be organized where 40 tons of aid will be transported to Armenia and Artsakh. Protests in support of Artsakh also took place around the world, including in Australia, the UK and the US. In Los Angeles, a crowd of tens of thousands took to the streets to protest Azerbaijani and Turkish aggression. And finally, Sivunets Lika Zakaryan took a series of photos which tell the story of the women of Nagorno-Karabakh. Though few are the women that are fighting at the front, many have been affected in their own way. The photos show many praying, volunteering, looking after children, cooking and even reporting as journalists.